So, back for another fun conventional, and this time we are going to be looking at Obstagoon. I had such high hopes for Obstagoon when it was re revealed. I really like the design of Obstagoon, and I was really looking forward to it being busted, because based on Lanoon's stats, it could have actually been amazing. And then, when I saw the stats, I was kind of disappointed. I think everyone was disappointed when we saw that it didn't get access to Belly Drum Extreme Speed. That would have actually been busted. Like, with the with the raised defenses that it has over Lanoon, with the Belly Drum Extreme Speed, that would have been so good. I think it's a good thing it didn't get it, because it would have maybe been too good. But it's actually way better than it should be. Like, I've, I've, I've given Obstagoon another look over, and... Yeah, it's actually pretty vi pretty viable, and I'm quite surprised that it hasn't really had any significant placing that I know of. But then again, we run out of tournaments now, we don't have tournaments. But yeah, the, the Obstagoon just really hasn't been a Pokemon, and it really should be, looking at it. It's got a lot of viable sets. Like, I've got six sets lined up for you guys. Like, the previous ones I've had, what, two sets? And this, this set, like, Obstagoon is very flexible, and actually pretty decent. So, I'm going to start off with this Assault Vest one. Defiant is a very, very nice ability. I'm sure everyone has seen how good things like Braviary and, and Bishop can be. Especially things like Milotic as well, competitive, like the opposite of, of Defiant. But yeah, Defiant's a very good ability, and just one boost can really make Obstagoon a threat. Base 90 attack is not the best, but it's still usable with Defiant. You won't be doing too much damage without it. And that's why I think that something like this Assault Vest set could probably be the most viable set for Obstagoon, because it doesn't rely on getting that Defiant boost. You try to kind of treat this like a Milotic, almost. You used to see a lot of Milotics with, like, Scald, Icy Wind, Recover, and that was kind of the support Milotic, and if you got a boost, that was lovely. You should probably treat this Obstagoon the same, same way. Like, you've got Snarl and Icy Wind, which are fantastic support moves. Icy Wind is kind of being forgotten about. I don't know why, especially with the instant speed drop. And with Obstagoon having base 95 speed, like, that's a very good speed tier, especially for instant drops with Icy Wind. So that that would be very, very strong. So you can treat it as a pure support, su pure support Pokemon, but if they give you a drop, it's suddenly going to do a lot of damage. Especially with Stab Knockoff. It's probably the best user of Stab Knockoff in 2020, because not too many Pokemon get it. So Knockoff is going to be pretty much your main move ob on Obstagoon. Pretty sure I have Knockoff on every single Obstagoon that I have on here. I don't think an Obstagoon should not have knockoff because it would be the best user of it in this format. So yeah, with the Assault Vest, you're going to take a lot of a lot of hits pretty comfortably because you've got very good natural bulk with Obstagoon. It's very, very respectable. And that's why I didn't feel like I needed to invest too much into its, its defensive stats because you only need that much HP to survive a Life Orb uh, Max Quake or a Max Steel Spike from an Excadrill. Life Orb Excadrill has kind of dropped off like quite a bit, but that's still a very significant benchmark you should have. Because Life Orb Dragapult is going to be a benchmark that most people will have, and then the step up from that is Life Orb Excadrill. So if you can survive those different benchmarks, you might as well, because like it, you'll still see some Life Orb Excadrills. And it also survives a modest Max Wormwind from a Duraludon. Not, not, it will get KO'd to a Life Orb one, no, without the Assault Vest, but with the Assault Vest, it'll be able to take it. Um, but yeah, like th that, that's pretty much that that investment is going to be the same across most of the obstacles that I have. Because I do think that because its attack is pretty low, you should be investing mostly in its attack. And because it's got such a good speed stat, you should be running a jolly obstacle every single time. You want to be making use of its speed. And with with, the, with its speed as well, it's going to outspeed things like Excadrill, which I, why close combat is going to be so good on the obstacle as well. Because you're going to be doing a lot of damage and outspeeding. Extra, which is really, really nice. So, like I said, it's got a lot of coverage. Like, those are some very, very viable moves on Obstagoon. I think that on an Assault Vest one, in general, the four that I've got there would be the ones that I would pick, just as a general Obstagoon, but got very, very viable moves. Like, Giga Impact would be there mainly if you are actually planning on Dynamaxing your Obstagoon a lot more, and then you can go for Max Strikes slightly stronger with the Giga Impact, but you can do that just as well with Double Edges. Because you get 140 base with Double Edge and 150 base with the Giga Impact. So take your pick of the normal move if you want to Dynamax and get some Max Strikes. Uh, counter is going to be pretty good because it's got very good natural defenses as well. So we'll be able to get off a nice hit there. Gunk Shot would be to hit the Fairies. But you don't really want to be using Obstagoon to hit the Fairies. Especially because it's Gunk Shot and 
Yeah, I, I would never rely on Gung Shot if, if I can help it. Um, Seed Bomb, if you really, really hate Gastrodon. Fire Punch, if you really, really hate Ferrothorn. And then Stomping Tantrum would be some nice Max Quakes if you wanted to, again, wants to Dynamax the Obstoon as well. And Surf is there to activate your own weakness policy. I've seen a Obstagoon paired next to a weakness policy Excadrill, and I thought that was quite clever because they would surf themselves turn one and get the weakness policy boost. That would also work with a Colossal as well. So surf is actually somewhat viable on this Obstagoon. But next Obstagoon, I'm gonna be looking at probably the most obvious one, I would say, for Obstagoon. The most obvious set would just be the Guts Flame Orb. And yeah, you, you'd run those three moves. You'd, ru you'd run max speed on this one. And you get that tiny bit of investment just so you can survive those moves I said before. And then just the rest in attack for the most amount of damage you can do. And you're sorted with knockoff, close combat, and facade. You're going to hit at least... I, think, I don't think anything can resist resist all three of those hits. So you're, you're absolutely sorted with those moves. And then you've got Obstruct as its, as its uh, unique protection move. It's actually quite cool. I mean, minus two defenses is very significant because then you you don't really care about your low, your low base attack because you'll be able to hit them at minus two. So that will be very nice. And yeah, you don't need any other kind of coverage on this kind of Obstagoon, I don't think. You could consider Bulk Up over Obstruct if you're really going for an Obstagoon sweep with the Guts, like with, with Facade, a plus one when you're burned. It's going to be doing a lot of damage. So the Facade's going to be doing a lot of damage in general anyway. So this is an entirely, entirely viable Obstagoon. I think I personally pre would prefer a Defiant one because that's kind of making use of its niche a bit more because Defiant is a very good ability in this format. If you really want to make use of it, you can go with the Choice Band. Because with the Choice Band, you've effectively given yourself a Defiant boost, technically, kind of. And then if you get Defiant boosted even further, then you're actually going to be hitting very hard. And yeah, like, like I said, you don't need any more coverage on this Obstagoon than Knock Off Close Combat. And this time, Double Edge, because you're not going to be burning yourself to the facades, so you might as well do the most amount of damage that you can do with the double edge. And then you've got Switcheroo as the final move that I've chosen on this one. Because tricking a choice band onto something like a Trick Room Pokemon will be very nice. You don't need to worry about Z-moves or Mega Stones or anything like that in this format, so you will be able to Switcheroo something, except for Silvalli. Like, that's the technicality, except for Silvalli. But yeah, Switcheroo anything, the choice band. A lot of things won't appreciate the choice band. Like if you if you switcheroo a Togekiss, a choice band, then that will really neuter it. So, yeah, lo lots of, of viable targets for a switcheroo choice band as well. But you can also go with Parting Shot as the... I was going to say coverage move. That doesn't make sense as a coverage move. But the fourth move could be Parting Shot as well. Uh, because you, you it's not locking yourself into Parting Shot because you get out of there immediately. And, yeah, that that's... Parting Shot is technically a trick encounter if you're facing a Hatterene as well. So that would also work. But you can also choice yourself into the Choice Scarf instead because its speed stat is, is good enough that it will outspeed a Dragapult even without a plus to eat nature. So you can afford to go adamant and have that little bit of extra power on the Obstagoon. And its knockoff does Oko a Dragapult. Not a Dynamax one, but a uh, I was going to say a general one. A non-Dynamax Dragapult knockoff does Oko it if it still has its item. So, yeah, that, that's a very good niche for Obstagoon. Not many Pokemon can do that. Because uh, a lot of Pokemon that can Oko Dragapult have a lower base speed than is necessary to outspeed it with the Choice Scarf. So, it's a very nice niche that Obstagoon has. Choice Scarf is entirely viable. I would put Parting Shot over Switcheroo on the Choice Scarf one. I would have Switcheroo on the Choice Band, but Parting Shot on the Choice Scarf, because you're going to be able to m most likely move first and get the drop on the opponent's so that they won't be doing too much damage on that turn. So I, th I think the extra speed would be nice with the parting shot with the switcheroos. But switcheroo would still be exactly the same. Like switching a choice scarf onto something is still entirely viable. And on the choice scarf version, I would consider surf in that parting shot slot. Parting shot slot? Yep, I think that's the right one. Maybe over double edge as well. That is if you have a colossal. Like o only if you have a colossal. Maybe if you have the weakness policy extra drill as well, as well or anything, but um, can get the weakness policy. But in general, mainly the Colossal. But you, because you outspeed Dragapults, you'd be able to get the Surf before the Dragapults, get your Colossal going faster than the Dragapults as well, and then you'd be able to use it to knock out the Dragapults and anything, really. So entirely viable you partner next to Colossal with the Choice Scarf Surf. And next one, 
going a lot more supportive with this obstacle because it's got very, very good support as well. So with the black glasses, you don't need much attack investment at all to be able to Oko a Dragapult with that knockoff. And then that lets you go mainly into bulk again. So still go on max speed because you should be making use of Obstacoon's max speed. But then you get a lot more bulk than the previous sets that um, that I've, I've shown you. Thanks to the black glasses. And I do in general prefer the 1.2 times stab boosting items as opposed to like a citrus berry because you're getting a 20% boost every single game. You may not be getting your berries every single game. So it's like an extra 5% or maybe 33% if you go with the super berries. But you always get the 20% from the, the stab boosting items. And that lets you have the extra bulk because you're not investing as much in attack. Like with the citrus berry, you need, I think, almost all attack investment. And that will leave no room for bulk. So maybe you get a tiny bit more bulk if the citrus berry activates. But you'll always have this extra bulk with the black glasses. And that's like any mod. Like I, I, run, I run charcoal on my incineral when I run incineral. Because I think that's better than the berries now. So... Yeah, Black Glass is very good on this obstacle. Let's it Oko Dragapult, and let's it have all the supportive moves, like bring back Icy Wind again. Still fantastic support. Parting Shot, again, brilliant support. And this time, Helping Hands to really help out the partners as well. So a really, really uh, support-centered support centered Obstagoon here uh, with the Helping Hand as well. But still having access to the F Defiance. So if they still try and stop your Pokemon from um, doing a lot of damage by reducing their, their stats, their Intimidates and the Wormwinds and stuff, or if they try to set up to reduce their defenses, you're still going to be a powerhouse after just the one Defiant boost. So really nice support here from this Obstagoon as well, and entirely viable. It's got a lot more support moves that are viable as well, like Thunder Wave, instant speed drop with its speed stat is very good as well. Uh, Taunt is very nice if you really hate Butterfreeans and Trick Room. Uh, Quick Guard is a very underused move in this format. There's not too many priority moves, but the priority moves that there are can be very, very annoying. Because there's not too many fake outs, but it's definitely still a move in the formats. And you're faster, I think, than most fake out mods. I think it would just be Raichu and Lipard and Meowstic, I guess, that you wouldn't be able to quick guard against. But against all other fake out mods, you would be able to. You'd stop all the Shadow Sneaks and Cycle Punches that are coming out as well. So quick guard, if your team really needs it, would definitely be a consideration. And if you don't want to go with a helping hand route and you do have a very physically defense, uh, physically offensive centered team, you can go with Screech or a very specially offensive centered team, you can go with Fake Tears. So it has that option of all three, Screech, Fake Tears and Helping Hands you get to choose. Um, but as a general Mon, it should be Helping Hand because you're likely to have offensive and specially offensive uh, Pokemon. And if you don't like Screech's accuracy, which I know I don't, then you can go with Leer. Like I've seen quite a few Leers on the on the showdown ladder, which is quite amusing. Uh, and you can al always go with Obstruct as your as your protection on your Obstagoon. But I think on this uh, on this very support uh, centered Obstagoon, you probably don't have space for Obstruct because you want to be supporting every turn. And then this final one, just a bit more fun with this Obstagoon. Don't know if this is the most viable one, but when I was looking at partners for Obstagoon, Indeedy popped up because you want to be stopping Mac punches from Conkelda because you're full times weak to it. So Indeedy made sense there. And then it was just like, why not go um, for the Psychic Seed option? So you lead with the Obstagoon and you get your Psychic Seed, you go for a follow me bulk up and then you're doing a lot of damage. And if they try and stop you from doing damage, you've still got your Defiant. So probably the least useful Obstagoon in this in, in out of these out of these six and that should be a jolly um i did say jolly it doesn't have a plus on the 220 but um yeah that is there's still a jolly uh jolly Obstagoon. but yeah Obstagoon is actually entirely viable and i am very surprised i haven't seen it pop up too much because being able to come up with six viable sets that surely indicates that a pokemon is viable in the format so i'm still not sure why people haven't run it yet maybe they maybe they it will pop up at some point but we will see now i'll finish off here by just saying a few potential partners for the obstacle i've already mentioned a few of them um in the video like with the excadrill you can surf next to and excadrill is one of the pokemon that's going to be want want going to want to be intimidated the most so pairing a defiant user with the excadrill would be nice and it's not like a bishop where you've got the crossover of steel types so you've still got that defiant dark type next to the excadrill but not clashing with types or anything and the colossal if you are going the surf route with either the Assault Vest or the uh, or the Choice Scarf version. Dracovish, another Pokemon that really benefits from the speed drops from Icy Wind. So like, I was thinking about Icy Wind when I was thinking about Dracovish as a partner for 
Obstagoon and Thunder Wave potential on the Obstagoon as well. And Dracovish is also a Pokemon that doesn't want to be intimidated. So really any Pokemon that doesn't want to be intimidated, you can pair up with the Obstagoon. Like the Durant that I put there as well. Of course, that doesn't want to be intimidated. And with the support Obstagoon as well, you can go for Helping Hands and really get that Durant getting Okos. And I mentioned the Indeedy with the Psychic Seed. But as a general Pokemon, like Indeedy would go well with the Obstagoon because it does help beat those fighting types that really, really beat Obstagoon. And I know it's a little bit of a cop-out putting Togekiss on this list. Like, pretty much any Pokemon, you can just put Togekiss on the list. On the list. But you really want to be beating fighting types with, uh, with the Pokemon next to Obstagoon. And Togekiss really is the best fighting type counter. So that's going to do it for Obstagoon here. So I'm going to do um, the poll like I did last time. I think that worked out reasonably well, where I put three comments in the comment sections saying the names of the three Pokemon that I'm going to be considering for the next fun, fun conventional. So I believe they're going to be Mamoswine, which is going to roll over from the last, the last poll. So I'm going to have one of the Pokemon that didn't make it roll over. And then I believe it is Toxtricity as one of the Pokemon, even though I did technically feature that um, before on the Kingler team. And there's Mr. Rhyme as well is going to be one of the, the Pokemon. I think I'll probably do Mr. Mime and Mr. Rhyme. If Mr. Rhyme, if Mr. if Mr. Rhyme wins, then I'll probably do Mr. Mime and Mr. Rhyme as one fun conventional. So, um, yeah. So please go in, into the comments and uh, like the Pokemon that you want to be featured on the next fun conventional. And I will take the highest liked comment and pick that Pokemon for the for next fun conventional. So go and vote in the comments, please. And also put in the comments the Pokemon you want for the, ne the next fun conventional after that that will be picked into the poll. Thanks for watching.